Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Cardcraft. Thanks for joining me for class today. And thank you so much to all of you who have been commenting that you are following along with me. You are joining class, you're doing your homework, other questions about your books, etc. And yes, Carol, um, I have been thinking of yours. Now, Carol, one of my subscribers, has put in a comment that her book that she's doing... She says she didn't think early enough. But look, it's it's one of those tips for young players, I suppose. The reason I tend to do the Reader's Digest ones or this sort of one is so that my tags are not too big, so that then I'm not making, you know, like massive A4 size ephemera pieces and all the rest. Now, Carol mentioned that the book that she's got is a natural history book, but it is... 10 inches by seven and a half. So it is this big by this big. They can be great to work in. They really can. Um, and I love the big lap books and all the rest. But for doing journals, sometimes they can be a little bit challenging, I suppose, would be the best way to put it. And... It's just a matter of rearranging your ephemera. Um, so for today's, which I know I forgot to show you last time. So I'll show you now. If you need to pause, run away, grab all your bits and pieces and come back. I won't wait for you. We'll carry on and you can just come back. How's that? <laughs> it's the magic of the pause button. Today's, and I'll help you, Carol, with yours as we go through. Um Today's one with our flip, I want to do a full flip out like this. So here's our page we did last week. Yes, I still haven't, or on Thursday, I still haven't finished that off. I've been, I've been busy. Um, today's one is a full flip out, okay, which will carry on to next Thursdays. So we're going to make our pocket here which will give us a pocket in the top here with an ephemera cluster, etc. We're going to make a pocket here so that there's lots of journaling space as well. While we're on that, I'll show you next week's, next week's, yeah, Thursdays, because if we close this over, then we go that way, we've got more journaling space, we've got another pocket, but we'll be doing this bit next Sunday, next Thursday, sorry. And if we fold it out, We've got just journaling, and then we've got the little origami surprise box in here, which is why the rest of this is fairly basic, so that we've got time to do this, because we'll do all of that. We'll put our skates on for that one, okay? But it's we'll work around larger books, smaller books as we go. To start with, with this one, we need an A4 sheet of paper so I'm just going to use coffee dyed paper um, this is just an A4 size sheet now Carol with your book you could coffee dye an A3 size sheet okay so just and I know you said you weren't certain with your digitals and all the rest work on your A3 get a ring I know I've got a ring for just such occasions and sometimes when I'm folding things I need larger pieces Get some copy paper in the A3 size. So that's the next size up, which technically is two A4s joined together that way. Coffee dye them, tea dye them, stencil them, stamp them, do all sorts of different bits and pieces. Then you've created your own backgrounds. Just ink them, splotch them, all sorts of things. And then you've got those ones as your backgrounds. And it works easier to cover your pages in your larger books. And then you can just use your normal size digitals and everything else to make all your embellishments and bits to go on there. And where we might fold something right down smaller, you'll just make a slightly larger one. Or you could make two grouped together. So with things like this, you could make two of these and have one here and one there. You could do your pockets like this and then maybe have another pocket further up. So does that make sense? I hope that helps 
with not just yours, Carol, but with others that are out there doing it and that have picked a larger book. I know I did. I ran a class at our local paper craft store a couple of years ago doing an altered book, just a standard altered book. And, and I know with that one I said, oh, you know, about the Reader's Digest condensed books are a really good size, especially for beginners. And I had a couple of ladies bring in some beautiful, beautiful vintage dictionaries, but really big ones. And so we just rearranged. So, yes, you can still use those, but we just rearranged as we went. So don't fear. It's not a problem. It's just a matter of rearranging to the size of the page that you're working on. Hope that helps. Right. So I'm just going to pop this one over here like so. And we're going to pull out our book that we're doing. So we've got our page here with our washi tape where we repaired the loose page that was on this side. So here's my coffee dyed paper. So it's slightly darker on one side than the other. I want to use the lighter side for this because I like the lighter part in here. So it just kind of runs on. And we're just going to adhere it completely to this book page. Before I do it though, I'm going to ink this edge where it sits in here. So again, with my gathered twigs, so just my darker one that I'm going to use all the way through this book. Save so mucking around with different colored inks and all the rest, just to give that an edge. Now, remember what I said before, we're going to pop a strip of double-sided tape up here as well, just again to help it adhere to the washi tape because it has a slight finish to it. So we're going to turn that around and I'm going to move those because I'm sitting my book on those. Right. And I just want that where it folds. So if I lift that up, I can see where the fold is and I want to go fairly close to that fold. I don't mind if I have a little bit of a gap in there because I don't mind that washi tape. And that's what I said before. Find a washi tape that you don't mind if it pokes through and you can see it. Uh, let's find the scissors. Like so. Sit you there. I can't remember whether I need you again or not. Oh, that's straight, isn't it? Now, I need, I need, I need, I need. I had, I had, I had, I had. Here we go. Now, I've been doing so much this morning and I had a meeting first up this morning. We'll use that. First up this morning, I'm an, oh, got it. I'm an admin or a moderator in a Facebook group, a journal, fake, well, journal, cards, scrapbooking, all sorts. It's called Playing With Paper and Glue. Um, do come over and visit us. We have all sorts of bits and pieces going on over there, no matter what your craft. And we had a meeting this morning, and then I just kind of got sidetracked after that. And um, I've just been playing on my desk and realised, looked up at the time and went, ah, I don't think I've done Sunday's video. Today is Saturday. So, um, yeah, stopped what I was doing, chucked them all behind me, and then... Um, We'll do this and then I'll go back to playing with my other bits. I've got a couple of journals I'm trying desperately to finish so that I can take them up to market. And, um, yeah, I just kind of got sidetracked, as you do. All right, so I'm just going to pull that one out there. I'm going to take off the backing to my double-sided tape like that. And then I'm just going to adhere this one down so I'm just giving it a little bit of edge just in case my page is wonky because a lot of these especially the older the book you get you'll find that the pages are not really square glue in the middle of that one um so yeah it's always wise just to give yourself a little bit extra otherwise if you put it right there when you go down you might find you're missing a little bit here Straighten that one out. Give him a good crease. Go right into that corner. Edge, corner. You know what I mean. You do know what I mean. 
Right, I'm going to turn that over and I'm just going to flatten it out this side now just to make sure it's all nicely flat. I've got no air bubbles and then I can see if need be, if I need to pop a little bit more glue down there. Right, he's on. Okay, so that's our background for this one. What I'm going to do now is fold this all the way back to where that sheet is. If you can wait for it to dry, it makes it easier because all it's wanting to do now is peel the glue off. But for the sake of this, I'm going to sit my ruler round about where that finishes so I can see round about. Go a little bit further. A little bit further. And I want that to fold. So I'm just going to give it a light crease. All right. Turn this over, and I want that to fold on that book. As I said, if you're doing this, wait for that glue to dry. It makes it easier. You don't run the risk of it just wanting to peel back the page that you've just glued on. So, just working that with my fingers. All right. Give it a good burnish with whatever, be it your scraper or a bone folder. All right, so that's given us our first flip, which is that page. What we're going to do now, so you can see from when you're doing this, how your pages are not quite square. So you can see that this is now starting to go wonky here, which is why I won't trim it just yet. So now what I want to do is fold this back on itself again. But I don't want it, this is where our page finishes, I don't want it to come all the way. I want it to come just a little bit in, right about even, down there. Give that a burnish as well. For me, it gives that extra, it gives you something to grab it with to start with, with or without a tab. And it gives that extra layering effect. And then it means that each one of these are a slightly different size. So it allows you to put different things in there and it just creates a little bit of interest. So I'm just going to crease that down again. And now we can trim back where it is on our pages. Okay. So you're going through three thicknesses. Hang on to the lot of them. And we're just going to follow down that page as much as we can. Can't see, can't see, can't see. Sorry, my sinuses are bad today. Um, when my sinuses get bad, I lose a little bit of my eyesight. I might need to grab the other glasses. I've got just readers, and but I've got two or three different pairs in different... Um, what's the word I want? Different strengths. There you go. That one I might need to do a little bit with my knife. I'll just start it with my knife. Sit you there. Grab my little ruler. Grab my knife. So I haven't taken it all the way in because I don't want it to tear my page again. But I can get the majority of it done. And again, I'm going through three layers. Beautiful. And then I can finish it off with a pair of scissors. like that. There we go. So now I've got my fold done. It's so easy this flip. It's just, it, yeah, it's just so easy. So what we're going to do now is ink all of this for me. Anyway, I like to have it inked. I like to see where those creases are. So I'm going to do my top edges. In like so. My bottom edges. This edge. And then what I'm going to do with where it's folded against. Oh, look at all those lovely marks. Yum I. Um, where it's folded against my book page, I'm just going to crease it back the other way for a little bit. So that I can run it down there as well. 
that when I undo it, we've got all those lovely, well-worn looks, I suppose, would be the best bet for it. So these ones we'll do next week. If you want to, you can sit there and ink your creases and that with this one, and then you're a step ahead next week. All right, so what we know, need my little folder, don't I? I don't want next week's folder. This one. Right, so here's my folder for today's bits. And in it, we have... We have some ephemera, some lace, some cheesecloth. I've got something to make a pocket out of. I've got some ephemera to go on my pocket. These are from the Witchcraft Do You Do mini journal set that I keep talking about. I've got a receipt book or... I don't know what it is. It's where you go to a cafe and, you know, they write that down. But it's a brand new book. I've just coffee stained it. Okay, so it looks old and crinkly. Got one of those. I've got some lined paper to make a journaling spot. Got some music sheet to go on my main page. Um, that's what my ephemera comes from, my flowers. They're a uniquely creative die cut pack. Um, Juniper and Sage Creative Cuts. And I've got just a book page. Okay. Now, with that book page, I better sit all those in there so that I don't lose them. What we're going to make... I'll pull this one back over. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Is this. Okay. I need a tag or something like that. Here we go. I'll just pull that out. Which holds your tag in here. You can tell I haven't done my tags yet. So this is just a little tag. But it's a little pocket. But it's great for using up your excess book pages. So, and it's so easy to do. So this is just a book page. Could be from anything. This one's from uh, something about circuits. And I love all these engineering type ones because they've got they've got graphs and grids and numbers and words and all the rest. And I like this size, this side. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to fold it and we're going to fold it. I don't want this plain piece, okay? So if I fold that like so, I've then got a plain piece there and I'm not overly keen on the plain piece. So we'll get rid of that one. And I can just tear that off about where the wording finishes. Now, this one has a slight finish to it, um, which means it's not wonderful for stamping. So I'm not keeping it for my stamping. So... That's what we're going to create. Now, you can create this any way you like. You can just adhere the bottom down here. Or if you like, we can get rid of that. Fold that up to there, to where your words are again. It's as easy or as hard as you want to make it. So I want to get rid of all those words there. I also want... I want, I want, I want. My husband keeps saying, you just want. This one's going to adhere over to that. I'm just giving it a light crease at the moment because I need to check that that's going to fit in my book, which it will. Okay, so you could use a larger book. You could use an old dictionary page. Carol, use your natural history book. And create these pockets. So then you've got pockets that are a good size for the book that you're using. What I'm also going to do is take these pieces off so that that will adhere down onto that. Okay. I want sharp little scissors again. I'm just going to take those ones off. Doesn't matter which ones you take off, but just so that there's not quite so much bulk in there. I know, I know. There's always going to be bulk, so it's just the way it is. But 
If it makes you feel better, take them off. If it doesn't concern you, don't take them off. Life's easy like that. You do you, and you do what makes you feel good. There's no rules. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. So this one's going to sit in here. Just going to give that a little bit of a crease. This one's going to come over to there. So look at all these wonderful numbers and words and all the rest. The other thing I like to do is I like to have mine edged. If you want, you can just chop it straight off with your scissors or your blade or your trimmer. You could use pinking shears and go across. I like to have that torn edge and even not necessarily matching. So that's mine here. Let's say I wanted it a little bit smaller. I would actually tear it like this so that I've got, and I want you know, a little bit down there, a little bit up there. I don't want a straight tear. So that now when I do it, and I'm going to put you there and you there, I want to take a little bit more off that. Right. Put you there. You, look at that. How yummy is that? Okay. I like all that look. That, But it's just me. And that's what I, why I like book paper. Because, let's face it, we've all got lots and lots of book pages, especially if we're gutting our books to create and make our journals with. What do you do with it all? Use it up with your pockets and all the rest. So I'm just running around all this. And I'm going to go that side there, front side on there, and then I'm going to go on the inside on here so that I can see all that as well. Look, how's that? So that's easy now, and we're just going to glue that straight down. So what I'll do to start with is I will glue this little bit, and I'm just going to grab a piece of scrap, sit you in. So that it's like that. And I'm going to use glue stick. Check that out. Like so. Now this one will be glued there. But it'll also be glued up here. Make sure I've got no glue on that bit. glue that one and I can glue up about there now you can do that with normal glue you can do it with glue stick it's up to you just do line them up when you get back down here pull that one out now there we go all done nice and easy these guys are so quick and easy to do and they're one of the pockets that I tend to I'll always have a pile of them done, ready to go into journals. So if I just reach over to my little bits and bobs one over there, I know I've got them done. Ah, oh, I just put a pile in that other journal. I might not have many done. They're there. They're there. Oh! Yeah. So I've always got piles of these sorts of things. See, I've got ones done there with just normal copy paper. I've got... Other little book, that's what I mean with pinking shears. Okay, so I've just got the books done, ready, the books, the pockets done, ready to grab when I'm in the process of finishing a journal and I'm just decorating. So this can go on now anywhere you like and you could make another pocket with it. By all means, have the two. But for this one, I'm actually just going to glue the whole thing down. Yes, I know. I've got two glue sticks going on my desk. Now, that one sticks up a little bit there, so I just need to sit that in there, just so I don't go on the front page. Right. This one can be glued down. Now, if you like, you can always stencil this, stamp this, give it another 
backing as well instead of just the plain um, copy paper. And you can get some beautiful... Well, you can actually create or you can purchase these days. There are so many Etsy stores out there that do it for you. So they've already done your coffee dyeing and they've stenciled them and stained them. And there's some beautiful, beautiful designs and colours in all of those. So, you know, they're out, they're out there. Just have a look for them. Right. So we'll very quickly decorate our pocket. And out of these little bits, I wanted my music sheet. I want add those bits because I hadn't decided which flower. And it depended on the size my pocket ended up to what size flower I required. So here's my pocket. I want a little bit of music sheet on here, but I just want it. Again, I like my torn look. just so that it fits. There is no size. It's just going to fit on. And I'm just going around right on my edges this time and I'm rubbing it backwards and forwards to give it that burnt look. So many different effects you can get with your ink if you like inking. But mind you, it makes life so much quicker if you're not into inking. It does. All right. Use this one, Kylie, and finish it up because it is so close to being finished. It is not funny. All right. There we go. So this one can be just, just down towards the bottom, somewhere, anywhere. Anywhere you like. See, and I still get these beautiful bits. I love them. I love them. Right. The other thing I want to put on I want to talk to you about, for those of you in Australia, and I think you can get them in America as well, Kayser Craft is a brand. Um, I have a lot of their smaller paper pads, six and a half inch paper pads, and they used to come with all these die cuts. There would be squares and ovals and circles like that, okay? These are what I call my cluster bases. And so I took them all out of my paper pads because I knew I wasn't going to use them with the paper pads. But what I'm now doing with them is finding some space. And with my antique linen, because they're the colours that I use, I'm getting rid of that stark white. And I'm being rough with this. I'm, I'm not necessarily smooching this over so that it's a beautifully blended backing surface. I'm getting my three colours, which is brush corduroy, which is my next one. Putting a little bit of brush corduroy on there and just going over again. Okay, so what it does, on oh, there my finger marks where there's glue. Okay, so now I've taken away the white from that. Just so that it matches in with my style of journal. Everybody will end up with their own style. But so it's not too dark. We've got these very light creams in here. But if I put a white white, see the difference? See the white to what it was? It's just what I do with all of those. And they're pre-done. They're sitting there with me. I've got them just to pull out in all these different shapes. If you can't get them from your paper pads or whatever else, spend a day punching out different shapes. Um, if you've got a big shot machine or die cut machine, Cricut, just cut out all these different ones from old cardstock. And these are all printed on the other side, but I don't need that. I just want the one side, okay? So I want that about there. I want a little bit of lace in it because this is me. <laughs> and I like my lace, so I'm going to have a bit of lace there that one about there. I'm just playing around with this at the moment. And I've got a couple of these flowers. And you see he's now way too big, so we might use this one. Now, these are used... These are these uniquely creative ones. And you'll find them quite often with Tim Holtz ones as well. When they've been cut out, 
See how they're really close here? And a long way away there. I do have a tendency just to go back in and go a little bit closer. I know it won't have that soft edge that they have on it where they're slightly rounded, where they've been cut out from them. But I would much prefer a sharper edge than all that edge sitting down there. And I don't have to do all of it. It's just a little bit. And what I do with these ones, see so this has got quite a lot in it. But that's, again, it's just me. It's something that, I don't know, gives me the jipes and um, drives me a bit batty. So I'm just getting rid of all that. And it's only on this side because the other side is so close. Okay, not all of it. Just to give it some definition in and around my leaves. Like so. And then what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to ink it. But I'm going to ink it slightly differently. I like to use... I know we use the blending foam when we're just inking our page. Well, I do. Um... But I like the little soft brushes, like the makeup brushes, for when I'm inking around die cuts like these. So what I'll do, and I'll just grab a permanent ink. Yes, you can use your distress inks as well. But I've got a permanent ink that I like the colour of. So we'll get rid of all that. So what we're going to do over here, something's tinging. I need to move that out because I, again I'll use my glass mat so here he is here and I like my archival tree branch I love the color of the tree branch so I like these ones and what I'll do is I'll just pick a little bit up and I'm just going to go in a circular motion and what it's going to do is give me an edge but it'll again give me that smoky uh, well-loved look throughout the rest of them. And for me, it takes away the stark white so that they will all match in with my journals. And it'll just give me that sort of look. So where's the... All right, there's the original. Where's There's one of the originals, and that's what I've created. Okay, so it just gives me that slightly well-loved look. And I've got rid of all these sorts of pieces. And now you can't really tell... That I've chopped into that to make it more uniformed going around. That just sits there. That one I'll give it a wipe. Because it's a permanent ink, I don't end up with as much mess on there on my glass mat. And I just use that one for my brown, any of my browns that I'm using. So we'll bring this one back over. And this one's going to sit in here. Which way do I want it? A little bit like that, I'm thinking. The other thing I want to do is pop on a stamp. Now, stamps you'll get everywhere. You'll purchase them in bag lots. You'll find them in digitals these days. All sorts of things. I don't want to use the whole of that. I just like this stamp. So what I'm going to do is, with a water brush... I'm just going to go over the back of this. Just going to get that water out. And I'm just going to make it. Yes, we can steam it, but I'm too lazy to go out and turn on the kettle unless I'm actually making coffee. So I'm just going to get it with water. I'm going to rub that. See how the paper's coming off? Can you see that? So what happens? is it'll just disintegrate the paper, but it will leave your stamp alone. If you don't have a water brush, just use a paintbrush with a little bit of water. Little or a lot, you know. Look at this. You'll see where it's coming and where it's not coming and where you'll need more water on it. But it means you don't risk... Um, tearing your stamp and it's in a full stamp instead of just torn 
around. Um, I would much rather them this way than just tearing them around the paper. Again, it is a me thing. If that's a you thing, that's how you do it. If it's not a you thing, then you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Look at that. I've still got a little bit that I need to sort out. There it is. Look at that. That'll go on the bin. That's actually now adhe ad adhesive. Like it's just been, yeah, licked and sticked. <laughs> so I'll put my water brush away. I'll go back down to this one. We're doing well time-wise today. I'm very impressed with myself. And that's just going to go over part of them with a little bit of cheesecloth. So I can start adhering some of this down now. That one I know I can definitely adhere down because that's got nothing else going on with it. I um, forgot to put the lid back on my glue also while I was playing around this morning and I just need to fix that now because I reckon I've got a dodgy bit in it. Right. So there it is. So this one can be adhered down because I've got, as I said, there is nothing else going on or under this little die cut. Put the lid on it. I'm actually going to grab my tweezers for that. Which way do I want it? No, like it that way. And I'm going to go on an angle. Give that a push like so I want my lace sitting down there I want that around there so just a little bit of glue for my lace well glue hanging out from that everywhere and I'm just going to do a little bit of a strip straight across there I know I've got stuff over there to hold that bit down. Do that up, Kylie. And you're going to... So I've got glue all over my hands now. Yeah, just going to sit there like that. This one is going to sit in here. Nice and easy. See, it's just... Have a look at what you've got. Play with the small little bits that you've got there. It doesn't take much to decorate the front of a bag or a pocket or whatever else. You don't have to worry about which way's up. You're going to sit in there off to the side. Now, my stamp and my cheesecloth, I just want a little bit. So and I've got my dark cheesecloth here again just to bring some extra colour into it. I'm just going to chop a strip straight there. Give that a well-loved look as well. And I'm just going to play with that for where I want it. Bring it out there. Work out. That one's going to sit in there like so. I'll drop you down a bit so that I've got extra layers going on about there. So I'm going to need to pop a little bit of double-sided tape on there to pick up my cheesecloth. Pull back the backing of my tape. See, I had it pre-cut. <laughs> Sometimes I scare myself. I know, right? I want you down there like that. That's just going to pick up my cheesecloth. Now I can glue the rest of this. I know it's still got a little bit of adhesive on it, but I don't trust it. We'll put a little bit more. Don't have much cheesecloth on the actual stamp, so I'm just going to use my normal liquid glue. All right. There, that one up there, just there. 
How's that? So there's our little pocket, all done, all embellished, ready to go. In here, what do we want in here? What I want to use is in here. I'm going to put that one away now, can't I? We've got these left. Right, so we're doing, we're doing all right. I want to pop a pocket in this one. in here. So we're going to use those ones. I just realised what's not in that one. I must have put it in the wrong envelope. I'll have to have a look in a second. Right. So here's our little coffee stained and you can see that it's a little bit wider than what I want for in here. So I'm just going to trim a little bit down. It can go smaller, narrower, but we don't want it any wider because it'll start to catch on the fold. So I'm just going to take a little bit of time off both sides. A little bit and a little bit. And we'll have a look at that. I haven't taken much off. Let's have a look. Mm. So if that's sitting in there, let's have a look. That's all right on that one. I think I want, just just to be certain, we'll take a smidge more off. But again, both sides, so that it's even again. That's more than a smidge, but it's fine. Okay, we'll pretend it's a smidge. Lost it. There it is. Yep. Happier with that. All right. So I'm going to ink around that one. There should be still ink on my blending tool. Just right down there. Bertha's going to go in a minute, isn't she? Sorry. Don't need to worry about the bottom because I've got a pocket going over that. So that's going to go right there. We will glue that down. And we've probably now just glued that to that book because I didn't change page. We're very careful. No. <laughs> cool. Cool bananas. up into there and I'm going to give it because it's a little bit smaller than the page I'm going to give it about the same gap either side as to the top hopefully something's a little bit crooked so we won't just set you there just we'll straighten that out like so and now this is in that as I said before that witchcraft do you do one, and I want, I want, I want, I want, if I take that back from there to there, I want it to, again, just be a little bit smaller so that there's a bit of room, but I want a lot of my numbers. So, I'm going to trim that one back to the start of the five, like so. And to the end of the five on that one, I reckon. Oh, I think I took a little bit too much off. Oh, it's there now. All right, I also don't want it that large. So I'm just going to chop a little bit off. I don't know. Two and a quarter always works. Cool. Uh, so it's two and a quarter now. <laughs> And these make lovely embellishments later on. All right, so I'll ink around that one. I'm not putting a thumb notch in it. I'm just literally going to decorate a little bit. 
So that's that one. And I've got that lovely ruler going on there. And I've cut out some of these as well. I'll we'll stick that one on there. And I've already inked them. Aren't you happy with me? Right. So I'm going to stick that one on to start with. Somewhere in the middle. And then this one. Which is just a number. Um, again, these... No, these ones are from... Uh, let me think. What one would these ones be from? It's one of the witchcraft you do kits. Um, it is. It is, it is, it is. It's that one. Elements. Yeah, no, it's from the Mix and Match Mini Journals kit as well. Love these pages. So, yes. So, it's from the same as what that sheet came from. Make sure I've got that up there. And down. Here, that one into that. I lift that up a bit because again, I've got it a little bit smaller, so we'll make it look like it was meant to be smaller and give us that border all the way along. Right, so there's that page. So that'll fold over nicely there. I want some journaling on this one. Again, coffee dyed, but the old, old school paper from the kids. I again, like my torn section, so I'm just going to make a mark. And I want that as a border, just there. Straight down that one. Let's just use this one, will we? Because it might be just easier. Put that on there. And straight down that. Like so, that one will go back over to that. Now, again, I'm going to ink around it, which means I don't have to worry about my pencil mark because the ink will cover said pencil mark. I'm thinking I might want a little bit more ink though. And again, my torn section down here, I'm going to give that a burnt look, so I'm just going to rub it along like that. These ones can have a bit more edging. And that's where the pencil mark is, so it's now gone. So this one will fit just here. Okay. Then we've got our actual lined journaling spot. But the last thing I want to do on this page is a tab. I want to do a slightly different tab again. Um, we've been playing with our, all sorts of different tabs that we've been making or they're out of kits or any of those sorts of things. See, and this is what I do. I get sidetracked and never actually put it on. So this one's going to go up there and down. Right, so very quickly, we're going to make a tab and then we're done. Just gonna sit that one in there, that one in there. I wanna make a tab out of book paper again. I know, right, I know. So I'm gonna show you the one that's on this one. Okay, so this is what we're going to create, this tab. And it allows us to pull this out. All right? So easy to do. And I have book paper, but I think I'll put it in next week. See, I've already got my envelope ready for next week. Yeah. 
that was the one that I had sitting for this one. All right. So you can either have your words going that way or that way. It's up to you. Um, this is just a little bit of paper again from a book that I've gutted. I'll only need the one page. With the book pages there. And I've got this lovely, lovely book page. You're going to fold it and work out if you want your pages to go that way or whether you want them that way. Okay, so let's have them going this way this time. Um, they're going the other way, so we'll go this way. What I want to do is take off one of those. But I don't need it that wide. Let's have a look. My width that I wanted, because I wanted to come in there, I wanted to end up being about an inch wide, I suppose. So that's going to be back here. I like this writing. I like that writing better. But he's not going to work, so we'll go that side because my fold needs to be on the outside edge. This one's really nice. That's really nice. I like that bit just there. So I need this to be about an inch. I'm just going to fold that out. An inch will give him just a little bit more. All right, fold that so that it's nice and straight. And then we're just going to cut it straight down here. I want to find my ruler which I put away. All right. So down the edge of my words. Make sure he's sitting down. Grab your blade or pop it in your trimmer. Cut straight down. Oops. Did I bump you? Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Now, I want it to finish on writing like so, and I want it to be about that wide. So uh, I'm going to go there and then I'll give you a measurement. So that one ends up being, I'll take that one again, a bit over two inches, around two inches by one inch. So what you'll end, what you'll start with is a two inch wide square. And that is so not square, it is not funny. Look at that. <sighs> How about I oh, just see if I can trim that up a bit? That's even worse. Doesn't matter. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's handmade. Yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? We're not looking. All right, here's your square <laughs> with a corner rounder. You're going to pop one side in, turn it over, pop that side in, okay? Now, you could do the same on this side. You could have them square. If you've got a corner chomper with your, you know, you could do that because they'll give you different size um, corners, rounds. So, this is a little... Old fashioned We Are Memory Key. No, EK Success one. So I'm going to do that because it'll give me a difference, a different round. No, it won't. It'll, um, it's really hard to get that one. We'll go this one. This will give me a smaller round. So I'm just going to sit it in. Yep, just a smaller round. Now I'll go that side. Right, so now what I've got is this. It's such an easy way to make a little tab. Sorry, I'm just putting those back in the drawer as I go. Ink that up. You might as well do both sides now before it's adhered. We're only going to stick one side down, though, at the moment. Because we haven't done the other side. So... My page will go that way. 
This is going to be it here. Anywhere you like, down here. And I just want this section adhered at the moment, okay? So the easiest way to work that out, because I haven't done my other page, is about there. Oh, it's about on the D. That's easy. Sit it on your grid. Do your center line, your center fold bit as a line. And see, this one's so wonky. So my D was there. So here's the line. That's the bit that I want to glue. Okay. I'll grab that one again. I'll glue this. I'm just going to leave my ruler in there just so that I can see where I'm going. Take my ruler out. And I know it was on the pebbles. I don't want to go about there. Double check that you're in your glue spot and try not to move it too much. So what I'll now have, once we've done next week's piece in here, then we'll adhere the rest down and it'll give you this. So with this one, you can see I've done my writing this way this time. And with this one, I've done my writing the other way. So you can do them either way you want. And I've just got a clear flower sticker and adhered onto that so that I could see most of my writing. I didn't want to cover up my writing too much. It's up to you what sort of thing you want to put on there. You might want to just leave it as you're writing. You could always put a an eyelet or something through there and have a dangle off it as well. There are so many possibilities when doing these sorts of tabs. So that is today's class. Hope you kept up. <laughs> Rewind, you know. Next week, so this is Sunday. Next Thursday, as I said before, we will be doing the other side of that flip, which really is just some more lined paper and another little pocket that's just a piece of scrapbook paper that i had floating on my desk we will be using a full sheet to cover these again i've gone down with my washi tape just to make certain so we will need a full sheet for your background one on each side or something that'll cover both of your pages I've got one book page, which I've torn. One's on one side, one's on the other. We will ink this, give you this mottled look. And then we're going to make a little surprise box. Now, these little boxes are awesome because you can just fill them with journal cards, um, little secrets, things like that. And then again, just a quick cluster on the top. Hope you've enjoyed today's. Hope you, oh, I'm so pleased that everybody's playing along. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you to all my new subscribers. Thank you all to everybody that's commenting on this one. I'm having a ball with this. So pleased to hear you are too. So happy Sunday and until Thursday, happy crafting. Bye.